you would need a lot more antimatter than we can actually technically uh, produce in, in our labs today. Um, but we know that it is a real thing. We know that antimatter is out there. We have been able to detect it, and we're also able to produce it, albeit in very, very tiny amounts. And we can find it in, in lots of spaces. We can actually find antimatter in cosmic rays, which are constantly bombarding our atmosphere, the Earth's atmosphere. These cosmic rays are actually just very highly energetic particles from outer space. And they themselves can be antimatter particles, or they can be energetic enough that when they hit atoms or nuclei, on the upper levels of the atmosphere, they can actually create cascades of particles that include antimatter particles in them. And we're able to make model predictions for them, and we're able to set out detector arrays and, and detect them and identify them. Um, okay. So uh, another place where we can find antimatter is in particle collisions at accelerators much like in the style of angels and demons, sort of. Uh, so when we collide two even normal matter particles together, if we collide them with enough energy, then that energy can be used to create new particles, because we know that energy and mass are equivalent through Einstein's famous equation. That can produce matter and antimatter in equal parts, as far as our experiment and uh, theories can confirm. And we can study, again, both the normal matter particles and the antimatter particles in our detectors. So we know that they're there. Um, antimatter is also produced in nuclear decays. For example, decays of radioactive elements in our surroundings or in nuclear reactors. Uh, but there's also some other sources of antimatter which are much closer to home. For example, bananas emit antimatter. Uh, bananas contain potassium. You might know that. Uh, they're very good for you. Um, they also contain a particular isotope of potassium, which is unstable. And that isotope, although it's included in very small amounts in a banana, it decays to produce about one antimatter particle every 75 minutes. Now, do not be alarmed. This is not enough to kill you. And I've looked this up. There, there have been calculations about this. It turns out that to receive a lethal dose of banana radiation, <laughs> you would have to eat about 70 million bananas in a few hours. And, and if you do that, I promise you, you will live forever in history. Um, yeah. So, okay, bananas uh, produce um, antimatter, and then obviously, so do we, because we like to eat them. And over uh, the time that it takes for you to digest a banana, you will most likely emit on the order of a few antiparticles. The, the real question that we're trying to get at is, if the Big Bang created according to all the laws of physics that we know and that we can um, verify experimentally, if, if the Big Bang had created equal amounts of matter and antimatter, how is it that the two of them did not annihilate with each other, leading to nothingness? How is it that enough matter survived to the extent that the, the observable universe has formed and we are here today? And we think that matter existed in just fractionally more amount than antimatter early on, such that when the two came together, for the most part they annihilated, but only a small part of matter remained behind. And we can actually calculate what fraction of it must have remained behind. And it turns out that for every pair of matter 
and antimatter particles, sorry, for, so for every uh, billion matter and antimatter particles, one, of, one matter particle would have survived. So clearly our universe has this intrinsic asymmetry that's ingrained within it. And uh, the question is, what kind of physics is it that led to this asymmetry to come about? We know that the Big Bang created equal amounts of matter and antimatter, so something else early on in the history of our universe must have interfered to make this unevenness happen at a, such a small one in a billion level and tipped the scales of our universe. So we think that that's something actually has to do with neutrinos. And neutrinos are nature's tiniest fundamental uh, matter particles. Uh, and we think that they themselves, along with their anti-neutrinos, uh, anti their anti-partners, could hold the answer as to why that is. So they're fundamental matter particles. They're electrically neutral and very, very small. And this actually makes them extremely hard to catch, to detect, and be